itself it's gonna be a bit tricky but as soon as you got the solution you can just relate it right so we have an integer array called as nums now in that it consists of basically n unique elements again mark the words unique elements it has unique n unique elements but you have forgotten the nums entirely okay however you you do remember every pair of adjacent elements in nums now if i say i have a b c d in my nums then i remember the adjacent pairs which means i remember i have a a b pair i remember i have a let's say b a pair i, I could remember that also so I then because AB pair and BA pair are both same and then I'll remember I have a BC pair or a CB pair then I'll remember I have a CD pair or a C, or I can say a TC pair so anything I can say I just have to say the pair itself now I am given a 2d integer alley adjacent pairs which is of size n minus 1 as you saw I had n elements so I will get adjacent pair element as n minus 1 right so I, I will get that now when I have that it, in, it indicates that from ui to vi basically these are two adjacent elements in my nums now it is guaranteed that every adjacent pair of elements nums of i and nums of i plus 1 will exist in adjacent pairs which means every adjacent pair will actually always exist in this adjacent pairs vector which will be given to us now uh, the pairs can appear in any order these pairs it can appear in any order which means it can be possible that BC can come initially or it can be possible that CD can come initially and it can also be possible that DC can come initially so it can appear in any order whatsoever so that is also a good condition that it can appear in any order so you will see that some things are highlighted so are, they are actually important for us now we have to return the original array nums if there are multiple solutions you can return any of them so just imagine we will be given these stuff which means these pairs and we have to return this original array now it can be possible that okay for sure uh, when you are saying are in firstly they are saying that if they can have multiple solutions so first thing is it possible to have multiple solutions let's see what if let's say i know that it is a b c d right what if i start and make something like okay i know that b is there so i'll make something adjacent to it which means i know that b is here so i'll make something adjacent to it which is a because b and a are adjacent okay then b and c are adjacent okay b a has already been there so i have to place c somewhere else i'll place c somewhere else which is having space then i know that i have a c uh, i can place adjacent to c a d i know adjacent to c already one b is there so i can place a d here so you saw that uh, one thing i can make something like this or i can just go ahead and make okay i have a a then i'll play adjacent to a a b I placed adjacent to B, I can place a C. Whatsoever is empty, then I can adjacent to C, I can place a D. I can make this. So you saw, either I will be making this format, which is you will see is the reverse, is exactly the reverse of the input, or I, I will make exactly the input itself. So these two are the only possible solution which you can have. And why is that the case? It is the case because these two numbers, these A and D, a and D have both of their other ends as empty so for sure I will have a space to actually put up something else but for the other elements which is B which is C they are bounded by two neighbors they are bounded they will for sure have these two neighbors beside them they will have for sure these two neighbors beside them so we cannot just uh, say that B and C can occur in anywhere while I can just say that the order will remain same which means A b c d a b c d it's just that i can for sure any time just simply reverse it because still the pairs will remain same so these two can be the possible solutions now coming on to that if i have given these pairs how will i have to make this now as you can easily see that it's a connection okay i know that i have an a i know that i have an a it is connected to b right because you know that it's a a because you'll see it's a sequence sequence is just a connection i have a, a which is connected to b i have a b which i know is connected to c right because i have i know okay a b is a pair so a b is a connection so i have two nodes let's imagine i have two nodes i can just connect them right so i know that i can connect a b with two nodes i have a bc i can connect them now i have a cd i again connect them so you saw that uh, 
if you just imagine these adjacent pairs as the nodes of the graph and this a b as just saying okay it's an edge between those two graphs those two nodes of the graph and then i can simply build the graph if i know what is the root node and root node can be any node whose like whose neighbor is only one so a root node having neighbor 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 only one so that's a root node so i know this is the root node for me i know this is a root node for me and i can simply traverse do a simple dfs or a bfs to actually get the entire array because you know a simple dfs is a, or a simple bfs is just a traversal now if it is a traversal you will simply traverse okay i will traverse a and then after a i can just go to b and then c and then d as i'm traversing to every element and for sure it will be just a single line because i know that every element occurs only once and if every element occur only once one element can have maximum of two neighbors that's it so for sure this will be always a straight line so you will always know if i will start from the very start i will keep on pushing elements in my answer vector whatsoever i have then i'll simply get my answer so you will see that you can just convert this entire problem adjacent pairs grab the adjacent pairs convert that to a graph traverse the graph from the starting node now it can be a it can be d also if you traverse starting from d itself you will get a d c b and a that's also a correct answer for you but you will see that the time complexity will actually be o of n and it's for sure because you have to iterate on the entire adjacent pairs array that is for sure obvious it will always occur because you have to traverse the entire input array itself space will also be o of n because if you even use a dfs or a bfs bfs uses the q dfs uses what dfs uses a recursive stack so for sure anyway even if you use a dfs or a bfs bfs might be a bit less in space because for sure if you just input this element in the queue then if the ch child comes in so the previous element will go out it will only come in now when the next element will come in so this element will go out it will again come in and so on and so forth so space wise dfs will be actually o of n but bfs will kind of tend to o of one so that is very okay for us so but still um, can we do it in some other way or because like it just seems a straight graph can't we just get the property of that straight graph and maybe try to find the answer for it let's see so what we have done is that okay we know that for sure if a has just one neighbor or like d has so like for now let's imagine just one node okay i got a, a which is having only one neighbor so for sure it is a starting node now for sure if it is a starting node then i will know it if for sure it will start from a now i should know very well and very fast what is the neighbor of a and what all possible neighbors of a are there right now it's just one which is b so which means that i the 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 concept of graph keeping the track of neighbors i have to make sure i will use that itself which means i know that i have a graph for the a i know the neighbor is only b for the graph which is b i know the neighbors are a and c it's just i'm making adjacency list of this graph for the c i know the neighbors are actually b and d for d i know the neighbor is only a c it is nothing but the adjacency list made for the graph and it will and you will have to make it either if you go via the dfs way or if you go via the uh, this way of our finding our answer now again you can just go via the bfs also it will also be same uh, please don't keep track of the visited you will keep track by the parent if you keep track by the visited then again you will actually end up having a complexity of o of n a space complexity of o of n so keep track that visited thing not just by saying okay my parent was this so i will not take this element so keep track of the parent also meanwhile uh, what we will do is uh, we'll just simply traverse it and try to use it sequentially without using the graph entirely in indirectly it's graph concept but not directly cool now uh, what we know that we have got these pairs which means in very less time i can just find out and for sure you know its length will either a one or a two if it is a one which means the these are the end nodes if it's actually a two which means it's a middle node now i know okay i have grabbed a a and a b because if i am saying that i'm starting off with a node with a pair because as i grabbed this i know that a and b are the nodes which means a is having a 
labor as one. So for sure, A is the starting node and the next pair is B. Now, as I am on to B, I can go and check. Okay, I am on to B. Now, I know that my, in, my, my answer is built so far like this. My, I am on to B. Now, I have to just increase my area. I have to build my entire answer. So, I am on to B. I'll go and check. Okay, what's the previous element? Okay, it's a A. So, I'll go and ask, bro, what are the neighbors of me? Bro, your neighbors are A and C. So, I'll just go and ask, hey, bro, is A this number? Is A the previous number of me? It is the last number. If, the, if my answer is built up till here, it is the last number and it is the second last number. So I'll ask its adjacent pairs of B that bro, uh, what's your first adjacent pair? He will say bro, I am A. I'll ask bro, A are you equal to my second last number? Yeah bro, I'm equal. Oh sorry, my next pair cannot be an A. Then I'll ask the next number. Hey, bro, bro C, bro C, are you my second last number? He will say no bro, I'm different. Oh bro, then it's great. Then you just, just push back in my answer. Okay, I'll just push back you in my answer. Then I'll just land on to this number, which is actually again the last element. If it's the last element, I'll again go and ask, bro, and if for sure I know, this is the second last element. I'll go and ask, bro, uh, who, like, I'll go on to you, bro. Now, bro, uh, for you, my second last number is actually, like, my first encountering neighbor is actually a B. Bro, are you equal to my second last number? Yeah, bro, I'm equal. So, please, bro, please, don't take me. I'll go to next number, which is B, D. And for sure, these will only be just two numbers. Now, I'll go to next number, which is D. Bro, uh, are you equal to my second last number? Bro, I'm not. Okay, cool, bro. No worries. Just you are my this, this answer, D. So, I just push back in my answer. And as you know that your answer, your answer dot size is actually have become equal to your graph size, which is this. And as soon as it becomes equal, you know for sure that you have computed your answer. And that's how in just simply O of n time, you can simply solve it in O of one space. O of one space. Again, as we showed that we can use simple a DFS or again a BFS. If you use a DFS, strategically for sure we will have to use a O of n space. If we strategically use a BFS, we can actually get it done in O of one space. It's just that we have to explain the interviewer that why it is O of one. Again, we will not have to use visited. And for sure, there's another way to solve it that we just simply use the concept behind the graph and just simply check. Okay, I know it's a straight line. I know for sure the previous neighbor. And with that concept, I can just simply get, okay, I, this is my last, if my array is built something up till here, this is my last number. This is my second last number. I'll go second last number. I'll go and check the neighbors of B and check, okay, the neighbor of B, which is not the second last number is my next number. That's it. Cool. Uh, let's quickly jump onto the code. Uh, so basically what we will do is we'll just uh, solve it the way we saw the O of n time and O of one space. So firstly, uh, I need to have my answer. And as I also showed that I need to have a graph kind of structure because of the adjacency list as I showed below. So I will just have the uh, my graph. Now for this particular graph, um, I'll just know that first I have to iterate on the entire graph itself. So I'll just go and iterate on all of my pairs uh, in my adjacency list, which is this adjacent pairs. Now for all these pairs, I know that I have to build the graph. So let's name it as a P itself. So I know that P of zero, I need to push back um, the P of one which is just a UV pair and also the graph of P of 1 dot push back a uh, P of 0. Now, when this is done, I know that my graph is made, uh, but for sure I need to get that starting node. So I'll just simply go on to all of my node pairs in my graph because graph is nothing but a map. So this is a pair of node and the adjacency list which is the vector of neighbors so i'll just say if uh, node pair dot second dot size which is node pair dot second is the neighbors if that neighbor size is one oh bro for sure i have got in what i have got in that particular neighbor which is actually a start node so i know that i have got the start node so although if you if you were start to doing a dfs and stuff so you would have taken a start node here let's name it as a minus one e six now why minus one e six because you know that uh, your nodes are from minus 25 to 25 
so you can take the other values now you, you can just mention a start node here start a node here and it, that will be nothing but node pair dot first if you would have done a dfs so you would have known okay i will start start my dfs from this node and i will get the answer but right now you don't need dfs so you can just ignore this part and what you can do is you can just push back these first pair first combination in your answer now what is the first combination uh, first combination is simply uh, the first node which is node pair or first because it has just one neighbor and also the uh, just neighbor of this which is actually again stored in node pair dot second and that node pair dot second only had one value again it only had as you will see it only had just one value which is b so i just pushed back this value and i'll just push back it's, it's the first value and for sure i have got the first pair with me so simply break because after getting this first combination i just i will now build my answer now while my answer dot size if it's actually less than my graph dot size because my graph also says the same thing uh, number of elements in my entire answer so while it is less so firstly as i know that i will have to find my last element which is nothing but answer and answer dot size minus one and also i have to find the second last element second last element now that will be nothing but answer of answer dot size minus two right so that will be your second last and last element now what i have to do is i will have to find the all the neighbors all the neighbors of your last element so i'll just go and find the neighbors of my these uh, last element now when these last element uh, ele because you know that last elements neighbors it can be the previous one and this one so i've got the neighbors now i'll just ask uh, bro if neighbor zero if it is not equal to my second last element so bro for sure for sure this neighbor zero is my next element so i'll just push back um push back this neighbor zero in my answer else for sure the next number which is the neighbor of one because i know i will ha only have two neighbors at max will will be the uh next element which is neighbor of one and with this you will easily get the answer and ultimately you can just simply return the answer now for sure you can just initialize these two inside also uh but if you are doing a you know dfs way then uh, you just it's good to actually initialize outside because your dfs recursive call will actually be outside now quickly run this and just submit it and you, that will be done cool thank you so much for watching see you in good bye take care bye bye it beats time and space too. Bye bye.